Week 24, Viva. What does medieval cookery tell us about their world? While we might think of food as a relatively minor aspect of the human experience, medieval cookery reveals the era's found fascination with hierarchy in both the secular and the sacred. Medieval cookery reveals, first, the nature of class divisions, secondly, the role of the church in the kitchen, and thirdly, the ways that people understood their bodies. My first point is that medieval cookery reflects the deep class divisions of the time period. Aristocratic diets included fresh meat and fish, fruits, vegetable, fruits and vegetables as well. Cooked dishes were heavily flavored with valuable spices, such as caraway, nutmeg, ginger, cardamom, and pepper. Other common ingredients were cane sugar, almonds, and dried fruits. Goods, could be imp goods that could be imported from faraway lands were hugely expensive, and they were treasured by the wealthy. Spices in particular were used as a sign and demonstration of one's wealth. Some medieval people believed that the spices actually came from heaven and that they grew on plants that were right outside of the gates of heaven. This would make sense because the spices tasted like incense smelled like and incense was in a church so it was obviously heavenly. It has been estimated that around a thousand tons of pepper and a thousand tons of other spices were imported, were imported into Western Europe each year during the late Middle Ages. These spices were not, as might be supposed, used to flavor bad meats, because those who could afford good spices could also afford to buy good meats and eat it fresh. And furthermore, as John Monroe explains, quote, spices were not a necessity because other far cheaper commodities could preserve food, unquote. Food was an important marker of social status. The, the hierarchical society of medieval society had three estates, nobility, clergy, and commoners. As the middle class grew larger and richer during the late Middle Ages, access to typical foods of the aristocracy also expanded. This threatened to break down some of the symbolic barriers between the nobility and lower classes. The response of the aristocracy came in two forms. First, didactic writing that warned of the dangers of adopting a diet inappropriate for one's class. And second, sumptuary laws that forbid the lavishness of the commoners' banquets. My second point is that medieval cookery reveals the rule of the church in the kitchen. The church calendars had great influence on the eating habits of medieval people. For a full third of the year, including Lent and Advent, Christians were forbidden to eat all meat. This excluded fruit, and they were forbidden to eat all other animal products, which included eggs and dairy products. It was also customary for Christians to fast on Fridays and in preparation for the Eucharist. Of course, as is customary for human nature, people, especially the rich, looked for ways to get around such restrictions on what they could eat. According to Bridget Ann Hensitch, Hensitch, maybe, quote, Lent was a challenge. The game was to ferret out the loopholes, unquote. For instance, the definition of Fish was extended to include all marine and semi-aquatic animals, such as whales, geese, and beavers. Because of this, banquets held on feast days 
or I mean on fish days, could still be, fish days meaning when they're supposed to be fasting, could still be particularly extravagant, featuring food from far off lands, which would include whale, things that are hard to catch to show off your wealth, but I don't think whale actually tasted that good, unsurprisingly. Anyway, they could also display illusion foods that imitated meat, cheese and eggs. Almond milk replaced animal milk as an expensive non-dairy alternative. I could imagine it would be expensive to milk the almonds. The wealthy also found that they could pay the church for exemptions from their rules. One tower in a cathedral in France is known as the Butter Tower because its building was funded by indulgences, which allowed some of the rich people to eat butter. My third point is that medieval cookery and the recipes it left behind tell us a great deal about the medical ideas of the time. Medieval medical science dictated what was considered healthy for each class and therefore what they were allowed to eat. All food was classified on scales ranging from hot to cold and from moist to dry. According to the theory proposed by Galen, involving the four humors. According to Chris France, quote, dating back to the ancient Greeks, to the ancient Greek, excuse me, physician Galen, the humoral theory dominated early to mid medieval medicine, which was linked by the theory to cuisine, unquote. Medieval scholars considered human digestion to be a process similar to cooking. In order for the food to be properly cooked, the nutrients properly and the nutrients proper, properly absorbed, it was important that the stomach be filled in an appropriate manner. During meals, easily digestible foods would be consumed first, followed by gradually heavier dishes. If heavier dishes were eaten first, they would sink to the bottom of the stomach and block digestion. Eventually, the body would begin to rot and bad humors would be drawn to the stomach, which is not good. It was also important that food with different properties would not mix because that would be bad too. It was the medieval people thought that the best food to eat and the easiest to digest is the closest which matches the human of the humor of what people felt like. Anyway, in a typical meal, the foods were served in courses. Before the meal, the stomach would be opened with an apertif, which I believe is a beverage, and would be of a dry nature. Also with confections made from sugar, honey, seeds, and spices. A meal would begin with easily digestible fruit and then vegetables, then light meats with pottages or broths, broths, then followed by heavy meats, nuts, and more difficultly to digest vegetables. Finally, the meal was finished with aged cheese or spiced sugar or a spicy wine, and these foods were supposed to be able to close the stomach and finish up the digestion. In conclusion, while we might think of food as a relatively minor aspect of the human experience, medieval cookery reveals the era's fascination with hierarchy in both the secular and the sacred. First, it reveals the nature of class divisions. Secondly, it reveals the role of the church in the kitchen. And thirdly, it reveals the ways that people understood their bodies. Thank you.